Just like everything else, the reading habits of Americans have been influenced by technology. A study by the Pew Research Center found that 23% of Americans listened to at least one audiobook over the last year, and 30% read an ebook, which may be an all time high. But the old fashioned paper volume is still the first choice for most Americans, and some are doing everything that they can, despite online competition, to keep the experience of buying and reading books fresh, like a bookstore we visited in downtown Portland, Oregon. Look at all these people. <laughs> On a Monday. On a Monday. I know. For more than 50 years, Powell's Books has been the go to spot for book lovers from Portland. And beyond. Jane Austen. From the classics. Margaret Atwood. Margaret Atwood. To more modern tomes. All the great. We're in a good section right here. Their shelves are jam packed with nearly a million volumes. People keep writing books. That's how we keep it fresh. <laughs> There's an unending supply. It's how president and owner Emily Powell says she's managed to stay competitive in a market where the giants have swallowed up so many other independents and chains. I mean, <laughs> to say you're passionate about this place yeah. is an understatement. That's right. Because this is a family affair. That's right. My father started the business in Chicago, but then my grandfather opened the first Powell's in Portland. And so when I walk in here and I see the old tile and the main entrance or I just smell the air, it smells like my grandfather to me. Yeah, to me, this is home. It's that feeling Powell tries to replicate for her customers in these 70,000 square feet of retail space. I always think a big part of our business is making just enough money for all the people who read our books and don't buy them. How many authors have I heard say to me over the years, I sat for hours, for days on the floor reading and researching for my next book. Thank you for not kicking me out. That's a big part of what we do. Make your customer feel at home in a place in a world that often doesn't have a home for them. It's hard to talk about Portland without mentioning the city's struggles during the pandemic, including a rise in homelessness and widespread protests during the social justice movement sparked by George Floyd's murder. Many downtown businesses closed, including Powell's, which laid off about 500 staffers. How tough was that? It was excruciating. But I also knew that what mattered most was that we come back, that we, you know, wait this out, that we keep everyone safe, that we make sure no one got sick just because they were coming to work and, and that we come out the other side. Those who were rehired started from square one with some longtime workers losing seniority and weeks of time off. Why was there a need to have former employees reapply? work here? Well, we have a very clear bargain contract with our union. We're required to follow it. And so for us, it wasn't about making anyone do anything. It was just following the contract that we had negotiated. Powell stayed afloat by shifting its focus to online sales. But that being said, do you see business as usual in a pre-pandemic form no, in the never. near future? Never. never? I don't think so. I think we're going to keep finding this messy middle for a long time. I think this big thing happened to all of us and we've only just begun to really kind of feel it and experience it and, and know. I mean, obviously we've been experiencing it for two years, but I mean, let it settle into our systems and come out into something else that makes sense on the other side. This is the rare book room. Still, there are some experiences that are distinctly Powell's. What's in here? We have some books that are $40. We have a set of Lewis and Clark journals that are 350000 Wait, 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 where is that? Well, it's not, that one's not out for customers to touch. History of the expedition. 25 grand uh -huh. you got. That's right. I think at the end of the day, we're all trying to translate this really magical in-person experience to folks who can't be here. So how do we get what happens here in this very special place to readers in other places? How do you? I don't know. You'd have to talk to that person. <laughs> <laughs> Powell's belongs to you. That person is social media marketing coordinator Sarah Reeve. That's sort of the magic of these bookseller displays is that you find the one that speaks to you and it speaks to you from a bookseller. Someone has made that decision. We watched as she created content for TikTok. So the first thing I do, I'll try and get a whole panning shot of okay, the whole, whole display. Okay, let's because see. Because we want to give everyone on TikTok the opportunity 
to pick their favorite book off of this display. What is Book Talk? It's where people go in that space to talk about books. And so Book Talk is the hashtag, but it's also the name of the community. And it is people sharing their hauls from bookstores. So like, here's the pile of books I got today. It's bookstores sharing the interesting content that exists inside them that maybe I've never been to this bookstore, but I'm obsessed with them because their personality shines on Book Talk. It's uh, authors. We are starting a semi turn pretty book club. There's authors who use it for self-promotion, who are sort of Book Talk Royalty. Book talk has put Jude and Carden back on the bestseller list. And it is changing our industry. I knew I wanted to do this display long before I had a catchy name for it. Um, <laughs> Bookseller Charlotte Starling. The display is Sad Girl Summer. Found inspiration from social media for this popular display. Um, I didn't know how to articulate it. It's sad woman, weird woman, especially in their like 20s and 30s. Sometimes you're working jobs you don't like or everything about your life is changing. Were and you having a sad girl summer? Yeah, yes. <laughs> I, it's always sad girl summer. It's one of those things where it's painful sometimes to read them, but it's so validating as well. It speaks to the power of storytelling, something Emily Powell knows will continue to bring customers through the door. I think there's still really a hunger for reading, for the print book, for something you hold in your hand and you take with you. And people like the smell of our store, you know, that very physical experience of transportation that you get when you open a book and you let yourself go into it. And I think that our store connects you to all that's possible in the world, but you can't get that through an online experience. So in that sense, I hope we're here for a really long time because we're not new and we're not old. Uh, it's something really universal that we managed to do. And I had not been in a bookstore in years. I mean, the COVID pandemic experience was you buy it online, you get an audio book. But to, there were t tons of people in that store. And to see them and with the way they engage with one another, I learned something. I had not heard of Book Talk. Could you? Yeah. yeah, yeah. Of course you had. You book didn't, though. I didn't, no. Book, book, bookstores are the are they really they, are. They, the were, they are. They always have been the best thing. They still are. And you can find a good one. I, I did like when she talked about the messy middle everybody is still trying to right. find, like post-COVID and post-everything else the past few years, like that reset. Yeah, and also holding a physical book. I don't know about your kids, but I know Jack. He does like having I do a too. physical book. And I love that he does because that means they're sort of safe in that space if, yeah. the, if the younger ones do.